Hey, uh, hi everybody. Uh, I'm Charlie. This is Drew Feed, Fisher Evans, and we're all uh, seniors uh, in the software engineering program. And our project was uh, SmartShift, and SmartShift is a uh, web-based scheduling assistant that works for both the employer and the employee. And uh, the problem we were trying to solve is that for an employer, uh, usually scheduling shifts is time consuming. Um, between you know your retail businesses, food service, uh, your trades, and anything that does basically part-time and full-time employees, um, the main method for solving this problem as, as yet is kind of a pen and paper, like real scratch work method or like an Excel spreadsheet. And uh, neither one of those is optimal. Um, it kind of uh, creates a, a lack of uh, a miscommunication between the employer and employees. It's usually like posted up in the back wall. Customer uh, or employees need to come in and see it. Uh, it it's really, really suboptimal. Um, so in our in our competitive analysis, uh, we looked at three main scheduling tools. Um, two of those, uh, Seven Shift and When I Work, are geared towards smaller uh, smaller workforces, probably around 20, 20 people or so. Uh, Infor is kind of enterprise software. It's it's really made for really large corporations, um, and So what we wanted, what we found missing uh, in these tools that none of them really addressed, was the uh, support for for mid-sized businesses. Uh, we geared our project towards around 50 employees, um, making sure that we still kept scalability um, to move much much beyond that. But uh, but our our target market was anyone 50 50 employees or more. Uh, we also wanted to uh, employ sort of a uh, department-based management. We wanted companies to be able to kind of sub-manage uh, each part of the company. Um, so for instance, if you were scheduling a retail store, you could kind of um, parse out different, uh, different scheduling to different departments and have each manager do their own. Uh, one of the other things that we wanted to do was uh, automate scheduling. Um, so we figured if you knew your employees' availabilities, that once you've established what roles you need for any given day, what shifts you need filled every day, uh, there's no reason why the tool could not take the employees based on their availability and plug them into the uh, shifts that they were actually able to work. Uh, and the last thing we wanted to implement was uh, employee controls. Uh, we felt it would be beneficial to everybody if the employee was able to log into the service and see their see their schedules, um, request time off, swap schedules with other employees, and kind of send it to the manager for approval. Uh, we were really trying to incorporate that through the tool to kind of uh, streamline that whole process. So yeah, how does SmartShift work? Uh, basic rundown of technologies. Uh, we're going to go into it in depth a little bit more, but we have basic HTML, CSS, and, and uh, we used Angular JavaScript for the front end. Um, and then, yeah, we have our Tomcat server, and which is written in Java, and we have some more Java tools in there, but we'll go into them further. So um, here's our basic top-level design, starting from the database side. Uh, we used MariaDB, which is uh, MySQL like reinterpretation, it's open source and it runs a little bit better, uh, which feeds into Hibernate, uh, a sort of mapping tool from the database to Java. Uh, it creates these really simple Java objects that you can use to interact with the database. And then we set up a database queue that's task-based um, so that as you are writing things out to the database rather than doing an immediate write, it adds it to the queue, gives back whatever data is necessary to sort of keep track of it within the app, and, uh, and then once the queue is ready to pop it off, then it writes it out to the database. Uh, our backend cache uh, uses a basic like canonizing mapping, 
and just stores all of the uh, objects as you create them so that they're easy to access. Uh, on load, it will load all the objects into the cache uh, as needed, and that way, if you need something and it's already in memory, you don't recreate the object, you just reuse the one that's already there. Uh, it helps keep it efficient to a large degree. So in the, uh, we're also, the target we had was for scalability. We were gonna, we had the option of having multiple servers running multiple businesses. So we use RMI services, which allows multiple instances of our servers to talk to each other um, that would keep data in sync. For instance, we have an authentication server, which then talks to a business server. Um, so everything's decoupled, uh, and we can easily swap things in and out on the fly. And then from the server, we use Jersey, which is a library, to provide JAXRS, which is just a web API. Um, structure uh, that allows front-end applications or other third parties to hook into our data and actually manipulate uh, the employee and scheduling data. Um, on the front end, we use AngularJS, uh, which is just a JavaScript model um, controller library that we use to actually make the UI. And we also implement a front-end cache to help performance so we don't have to constantly call information and uh, keep looking it up. So what is SmartShift? Uh, we talked briefly that we wanted to make sure we had the ability to manage groups and departments and that sort of thing. So the key terms to look into, because we had to have you know the same words for everything, uh, a group is like a department or a team. Uh, for instance, if you're talking food service, like a dine-and-go restaurant, uh, you might have a kitchen with chefs and dishwashers and what have you. Uh, and you might have the dining room with the hosts and waiters and busboys, uh, and inside the dining room at the bar. Uh, and everyone probably wants to manage their own employees. We talked about how we don't want to have just certain people on the schedule. We probably have, you know, the sous chef in the kitchen that would schedule who he needs or she needs, and then they're in the same um, sense. A role is within a group. It's purely logical. Uh, it's kind of the position or job title that they have. So in the kitchen, you'd have the chef or dishwasher, and then the employee is the actual person working. The important distinction is that they can be, depending on the role they're in, they can be the manager of that group or they're just a, a worker. Uh, so their permissions are based on that. So we're going to get right into a demo to show a little bit how the application works with this. Uh, first thing to mention to bring up, uh, we do have a login screen. We currently don't have uh, a way to register uh, because we were working so hard on the functionality, uh, but we do have test users set up with test data. So if I log in here, uh, I talked briefly about the multiple businesses and how that works. So a, a user can be tied to multiple employees across multiple businesses in the case that they work at two, they have two jobs and each use the same service. When they log in, they're prompted to look at what business they're looking at. So for instance, here we're going to go in here, and this brings up uh, group management. So I'm logged in as like the uh, pseudo user, like the top level management user that has access to all the controls right now. So if we go into a group, let's say uh, IT services, uh, at list on the left we have an employee list of all the actual employees, uh, on the right we have the roles within the group. So we can, we tried really hard to make sure that all the UI was in like intuitive and drag and drop and easy to use. So we do have uh, drag and drop functionality for almost all the functions in the app as well as on the ability to use buttons for those not looking to use drag and drop. So here you can see that I'm actually adding my, I just added myself uh, to on call. Uh, here I can move uh, Scott Adams from on call to junior techs, and that'll actually move him from the on call to junior techs. We can go ahead and create employees uh, and define, obviously, like the initial roles that they belong to. And so the user is added. Uh, this is also all automatically being pushed to the back end and eventually to the big database. So all this is live. And if someone else were to log in, they'd be able to see this user right away. We actually have implemented a, with the caching system an update system so data doesn't get stale. So if data does change while you're logged in, it will actually update on the fly. So Charlie here uh, is going to log in on his computer and manage do some sort of management and we'll actually see the change persist onto my browser. So for instance, if I wanted to remove Drew from a uh, senior tech position, hypothetically <laughs> speaking, um, so I sent that to the database and again we pull for changes um, every however yeah, many seconds, it but it's configurable, it's a configurable uh, 
Oh, it's entirely. based on your usage. So if you're sitting idle, uh, the update changes, so you're not sitting there pulling data all the time. But if you're interacting with the system or messaging, it pulls more frequently uh, to streamline the bandwidth. And uh, one of the other things to note is that we did make a requirement saying that an employee needed to be at least in at least one role. Right. So the one thing to talk about is that we can't just have an employee in a group without being in a role. So for demonstration purposes, I'm going to go back out from IT services and let's say I want to add this some user to sales. We can filter out the employee list because right now it's just selected for uh, sales. But we can go ahead and select IT services, and we can also select the, the roles if we wanted. Um, and this will filter out. This will also add them to here, the, those users. So we scroll down, find some user. Uh, we can actually move him to let's say he wants international sales. It'll prompt you if you want to add him to the group because he's not already inside the group. Uh, we can go ahead and say yes, uh, and the user's added. Uh, if we go into the edit user, you can also see that here uh, it shows the groups and roles that they belong to. Uh, and so we can go ahead and manage that. So for demonstration purposes, again, I'll go ahead and remove some user from IT. So there I'm moving from the on-call on call role and removing from the junior text, which is his last role in this group. Uh, the system will prompt us that this is the last role he's in. We have the option to either remove him from IT services completely, or we can also have the ability to move him to a different role if we didn't mean to remove him from the group. So we'll go ahead and actually move him to the group and apply the changes. And he can have more than one role. Right? Perfect. <laughs> yeah. He can have more than one role as they want. Yeah. Um, so obviously that didn't work as expected. That's one bug. So once the user is removed, once the user is removed from a group, we can actually remove them from the actual system. For here, Wally uh, is only belongs to this role and group. So we have the same options, but instead of removing the role, we're actually deleting the user uh, because he won't exist anywhere else. Uh, doing so will remove the user from the system. And so all this data is persisted as we demonstrated to the other computers, so everyone else will be getting that same update. Uh, and if we do have checking. Um, oh yeah, we'll get into that, that later. So if we want to go back to the presentation, Drew will talk about scheduling. So essentially what we wanted to be able to do was make a shift for a role and have that shift on as many days in the week as you wanted um, and have as many uh, roles necessarily on, on a shift as, as you might want and then you could then schedule an employee for uh, a shift on a particular role so that there's differentiation between I'm working a shift today as a cashier or I'm working a shift today uh, running food or, or what have you. Um, and obviously the employee shifts are on a particular day and we'll have a little demo for that. So one thing to mention is that uh, we do have sessions persisted. So this is actually a new tab and it uh, realized that we we're logged in um, and automatically logged us back in to use we logged in. So uh, to go over some of the shifts, at, or we, could, we have a similar view where we have a list of employees uh, which is filtered out uh, by the, the groups here. And then we can also filter out by role if we wanted. So adding a shift uh, is pretty simple. Uh, the idea is that there is a start time and end time, and it's on a per-week basis. So here we have a 9 to 5.30 shift, uh, and we can say Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. Uh, we can go ahead and create the shift, and we'll see here that that comes up here, and that these are actually all the same instance by how they're highlighted when you hover. Uh, if we were to go back to all the groups, you'll also see that it is specifically sales, uh, except for any role. So, if we wanted to schedule something, someone for the shift, we need someone to be in sales, uh, obviously. So if we try to schedule Charlie, you'll actually see how he can't because he's not in mm -hmm. the group sales. Uh, so we can go in here and filter on a shift, which will set the group and role uh, requirements. So then anyone on this list can be assigned to this, uh, this shift here, specifically for Monday. So one thing to mention is that it's on a per day basis. They're not assigned to every instance of that shift. Uh, and users can be assigned or moved around from shift to shift uh, if need be. So, anything else you want to add to that? Oh, no, okay. I think that's that's sufficient. <laughs> All right, uh, just um, quick development processes. Uh, we primarily uh, we met twice a week, uh, as per the the schedule, the uh, course schedule. 
Um, but we also had a lot of weekend sessions um, to kind of get everything done. Uh, any other outside of that communication was done through our Facebook uh, Facebook thread that we, we created. Uh, basic division of tasks was I was uh, front end. Uh, Fisher was all over the place. Uh, <laughs> did his hands and everything, and uh, Drew was prim primarily back end and uh, day race. A uh, couple of fluff stats here. Uh, had 480 commits. Uh, only 27 of them had swears in them, and they were all Drews. <laughs> so what's next for Smart Shift? Uh, uh, one of the things we wanted to do versus what we got done, I mean, obviously we, had a, we were a bit ambitious with what we wanted the end product to do, uh, but we're still content with our original scope. We figured to release it on a commercial level, like these were the features that we would want it to have. Uh, so we don't regret creating such a large scope. The problem is, is that we did not create a timeline that met that scope. Um, so when you have a big scope, obviously if you want to have some sort of level of success, you really need to budget your time and have deadlines like this part needs to be done by this day, this part needs to be done by this day, and we did not get that formal with that. Um, what went right? I think um, <laughs> speaking, oh, to, speaking to the scope briefly, I do think in terms of what went right, uh, we made sure to pick a project that could be uh, produced really modularly so that if there were things that had to be left out, we would still have a thing that was really cool and that would still work. Um, I think we, we were really selective about our project and, and ultimately picked something and, cool. Yeah, and in terms of the structure timeline, uh, the scope, as we've said a lot, was large, and even if we did have 40 hour weeks, we probably wouldn't have been able to achieve the, the scope uh, because we did aim rather high on purpose. For what went right, I guess we'll have. Um, yeah, what went right? We definitely have really great performance. Um, it's, it's. That's all it says on the slide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's. It's it's really great. Though. We did aim to have uh, like industry ready performance. We made sure everything we wrote uh, and that was fully implemented took no shortcuts. Nothing was compromised. Uh, everything was streamlined to match any kind of scale we'd need uh, and any kind of modularity in terms of decentralizing servers and such like stuff like that. Uh, and the other thing we really really liked was the fluid user experience. Uh, we felt we spent a lot of time making sure it looked good. Uh, it felt good using the product and. It made sense to what you're doing. It was intuitive. We didn't have to be taught hours of lessons to figure out how to use it. We also we didn't use any like duct tape or, or, or piece anything together, sort of half 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 done. Um, every, everything that we did is done right, um, and and we didn't take shortcuts. Um, so future plans, just really briefly, I don't think I'm going to have time to talk about all of them, but um, we did want to compound the DB tasks uh, just to further improve performance. Um, all the database stuff happens in a separate thread right now, but if we could compound things in the queue that relate to the same data, then we could do fewer writes out, which uh, would be great for us. Uh, we didn't get to the automated scheduling. There's some work on employee availability, uh, but it's not fully done yet, and uh, messages and requests not even started. We were planning to have notifications for uh, email, push, and text, uh, and we were going to leverage some third-party services for that, but we didn't. Yeah, so and for some of the things we didn't want, we did have mock-ups for all that stuff, uh, and a lot of the design scoped out. We just didn't have the chance to implement it. Uh, so we were going to have an idea of a dash where people or businesses could post a news feed, such as like uh, events coming up or things all employees should know about. Uh, and then also just a great quick glance at schedules and messages that you've had. Um, messaging just kind of stylized out uh, we have here. Uh, and then settings, being able, the user being able to change the profile picture or change the notification settings. Uh, Long-term long goal for notifications, they'd be able to get uh, email and SMS notifications as well if there was a mobile app, mobile pushes. One of the things we wanted to make sure that the user had is privacy and using our service as a proxy to the private uh, communication. No one really wants to necessarily give out their cell phone number to everyone at their work. So using SmartShift allow people to have access to communicate with everyone at their work with without having to delve out their personal contact information. 
And uh, if you uh, hover in the top left hand corner of the application, there's a little, pretty good Ooh, little Easter egg. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's very cool. <laughs> we almost forgot about it. <laughs> yeah, it brings us together, guys. <laughs> so, any questions? Yeah, yeah, two. Uh, what made you come up with this particular. Fisher made us. <laughs> I proposed it and they just made me and my team. Uh, because I actually thought it was a reasonable business plan. There was a market it for it, and I thought if there was something that was worth working on, I'd rather make it worth working on. I'm all for pet projects, but if we're going to spend a whole year working on it, I want to make sure it's definitely worth something. It's a great something. project. Uh, and my second question is if I can only work Mondays and Thursdays, that's in my profile. Yeah, yeah, he would indicate that. So if you tried away. to drag me to Wednesday, it would bounce back. That's the design. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't. And then managers would have to like approve your availability. And how so. many filtering factors would there be? I mean, obviously availability would be one, but I guess you could build in whatever factors you wanted to, right? Right. Like design. needs supervision might be one of the filters. Right. Yeah, well, any good. anything um, anything that was a manual filter, we also we were thinking what other six we lack of a better term, success factors, which right, is a reasonable yeah. way to describe it. But we also wanted to, when we were implementing the uh, intelligent scheduling, like the auto scheduler, we'd want it to be able to set to like, maybe you want just whoever's available, or maybe you want the cheapest workers you have mm -hmm. to cut down your labor costs, or maybe you want um, Make sure you don't, all your you're more experienced people. Shit, so yeah. we had kind of, a, our idea was to, to have some sort of like a pretty in-depth um, filtering method um, for that. Yeah, in the back. Yeah, I got two questions. Also, the first question is, can this be in some form incorporated into a company's payroll system at all? That you thought about that, or there is talk about that, and we talk. I'm um, touching the fact that it's really modular, so we could have an additional feature that they could be charged extra for that allowed you know be as like their punch-in system and do you know hours worked and payroll and all that. Not necessarily the payments, but being able to get the dividends and all that for. Additionally, if, if somebody was interested in integration, our platform was uh, developed API first, so we could always just say, hey, here's our API, you want to build a plugin for it, go for it. Yeah, we wanted our product to be able to not just be used by our application, but open it up to other third-party vendors uh, to definitely foster like growth and usability. In terms of the manager or Supervisor switching somebody's schedule around. What kind of notification does the employee have for schedules change? You want to talk about publishing templates? Um, sure. So the idea was that we would have a schedule template um, uh, that you could reuse week to week with a certain set of shifts and roles on it based on what coverage you need, and then that you could assign employees to it. So that's the that's the sort of fundamental idea. Then on a weekly basis, you could say, I want to use this. Uh, template and you could add shifts to it as as you go when you actually say okay this schedule is done and everyone is scheduled on it you can publish it then at that point and it would notify all of the uh, employees who are scheduled on that week uh, that their schedule is in it would pop up on the on their news feed and uh, of course any changes to the schedule would also notify them either by push, by email, or by text, whatever they're set up for. So that would be a bad day if somebody had their shift change yesterday, they didn't send their email, and all of a sudden they're supposed to Yeah, well, yeah, that's why we yeah. try to incorporate things like SMS for people that have cell phones. Um, I mean, there's even the possibility of automating calling systems. I mean, there's a whole slew of notification types that people wanted, to, but it's just a matter of implementing and hooking into it. Why don't we save some of the other questions for the break? Because we have a, another session starting up here. So, uh, thanks for now.